What's up, fellas? Today we're gonna to be looking at this little machine here that I've built. This is a steam cleaning degreaser tool, basically. You can use it for other things besides um, a degreaser tool. The reason why I decided to slap this together is because several people have brought up the possibility of building a commercial steam cleaner for under $500. I have three videos on the subject. There are several people who have been asking, especially this guy here, I think this is him, this guy was actually wanting to build one, and he has looked at several of the actual commercial models, and from what he's telling me is basically they just, you can't find a small miniature steam cleaner, and I believe he was in the auto detailing industry. This thing would be awesome for that. What was another guy at? Uh, this guy here was talking about like he wanted to build one, and I've, um, these videos are doing pretty well. I mean, I just posted it a, like a month ago, and figured I'd go ahead and, and um, finish up on that. So based on those inquiries and the simple fact that I have to reassemble my hydrogen torch, it is a carcinogenic mess at this point. I'll have cancer for sure if I use anything other than some type of liquid-based cleaner to do this job. It needs like ground with wire brushes and all that, but uh, I'm not gonna be the fool. I'm gonna try to steam clean that stuff off there with. 100 PSI saturated steam and based on that little chore and the comments that I've been getting I decided to go ahead and throw this thing together and I threw a little bit of an estimate together for you you're looking at about hundred and fifty dollars worth of equipment but I want to say something here real quick this is a test device this is nothing more than a prototype never use a steel tank for a water reservoir I'm gonna be using distilled water in this test you should always use distilled water in boilers because the fluoride that they use to poison us and make us stupid will clog it up in no time. Your penile gland as well. At any rate, the uh, the reason I'm saying that is obviously the tank's going to rust out, right? I mean, and it's going to blow up and kill you. This is a Harbor Freight air compressor, which means that um, you definitely should not put water in it. This thing's probably paper thin. So... I highly recommend that you find an oxygen tank and use that for your reservoir. Oxygen tanks can handle a lot of pressure. And um, not only that, if I had a good oxygen tank, and I do, I might build one, you could run this system off a compressor like that right there. This little compressor is probably capable of 450 PSI's, which would be far more suitable for a steam cleaner tool. However, today we will be observing the 100 PSI attributes of this particular arrangement. I'm telling you that with an oxygen tank and a refrigerator air compressor pump, you would really be in business. You would be out doing the commercial models for sure. So let's check out what we have going here real quick. I'm babbling on like a madman. This is a thermal couple. I have an alarm set off at 211 degrees because we don't want the water to start boiling. That thermal couple is connected to this inline heater. This little device may be familiar to a lot of you guys. This was my waste oil burner inline heater. And we're gonna be using that to preheat the water to 211 degrees before it gets to this nozzle. This will be the handheld steam nozzle. It's fairly large. I don't like the size of this. I'm thinking about hooking it up to uh, this torch right here since it's smaller. I should probably just do that. We're not gonna need the heat this torch puts off now. Subsequent testing required this torch because it's the only one that can put out the power this thing can release. This thing probably has a BTU rating higher than two of the best uh, benzomatic torches you can get your hands on. The flame that comes out of this thing is insane. It's definitely a turbo torch. And to give you an idea of what we have going on with this coil, you know, unfortunately guys, I don't have the specifications of this coil. I know we have some... Uh, that looks like 16th inch tubing and um, some 332nd maybe. I'll get the dimensions for you guys. It's basically just your standard hardware tubing. Um, I want to say this is 3 16ths. I would have to check. It's been so long and you see this other coil here. I also bought this from like a farm and home or something like that. 
just standard small copper coil that you get out of a hardware store. They don't have any other sizes than that, no matter where you go. So you're bound to run into the right size if you go looking for it at Lowe's or something like that. I do not believe they have this at Lowe's. I think you have to go to somewhere like a Farm and Fleet, Farm and Home, or a Big R. So we'll talk about this preheater a second. This is just something that I slapped together in a big hurry. I'm not allowed to spend any money on this project. So what we have inside of here is a 500 watt halogen light bulb that is connected to this router speed controller that we see here. That will enable us to um, dial exactly in the preheat temperature discharge. You can see here we have a thermal couple going into the discharge port. Okay, that's more like it. So essentially what we're going to be doing is hooking this airbrush line up to the thing. Because that should be able to handle the uh, 200 some degree water that's going to be blasting through it. The flow rate that you need is not that big. That's why a little compressor can do the job. The flow rate is so small that it will barely kick on. Um, this larger tank that we're looking at here is a pressure reservoir. The air compressor is directed directly into this tank right here. There's a check valve in there and that's hooked directly to the compressor. And this stores pressure up to 130 PSI, at which point that transducer kicks it off. Unfortunately, these transducers don't kick up back on to 100 PSI. So you're basically limited to 100 PSI steady flow. You can run it higher at pressures, but it's just not steady and it's kind of stupid. So I just don't even bother. I just keep it at 100. That pressure reservoir is then connected to this pressure regulator. The pressure regulator is connected to the pressure reservoir. And I would have to do the mathematics on this. I'm pretty sure that when you have a tank like this, if you charge the fluid with um, 60 PSI, the discharge is 60 PSI of fluid. I'm, I'm almost positive, I'm 99% sure, but things kind of get strange when it comes to machinery and pipes and stuff like that. There's a possibility the pressure will only equal the head generated by that pressure. If you're familiar with the term pressure head, you'll know what I'm talking about. If you know whether or not what I'm saying, um, is an actual fact then let me know because i pretty sure the pressure in the tank indicates the pressure of the fluid i could be wrong as i said that so i don't know i'm almost positive so today i'm going to hook this thing up the torch will be uh, connected to this tether hose that i bought today for 14 dollars and this thing here i'll give that a blast So you wanted to clean that up before you were going to sell it or something. Let's see what it'll do. There's your before. It's worth five dollars right now. See what a spray can do. Okay, so that's the flow rate I'm going to try and start with. It's probably a little too much. But this needle valve is being a real pain in the neck. Turning it down much doesn't. Okay, we'll try that because I know from experience that's going to be a huge blast of steam. You turn that much water into steam instantly. So now I have to turn on the heater. And you can see that it is fired up. I don't have a wattage meter hooked up to this right now, which is kind of stupid of me. I really need to do that. Okay, that's only 139 watts. That ain't going to do. <clears throat> It's only giving me 70. Let's kick it up to about 300 watts. That's probably about the ballpark we're going to want to make this happen. Okay, that temperature should start going up. She's really shining under there now. We'll be firing that torch up here in a minute. Maybe I don't need to get it as hot as I think. Surely that coil can do better than that. It might just take a while to disperse the heat in that water. We're hovering at 300 watts still. I'm afraid to turn it all the way up because that's when stuff starts breaking. 
at 100 degrees. Looks like it might be stabilizing at that. Yeah, we're not going anywhere fast here, are we? Oop, there it goes. Let's try 350 watts. I ain't got all day and my tank's running dry as we speak. I could imagine just taking the full 500. Oops, I don't want to go that hot. I don't want to break before we start. <laughs> yeah, we'll leave it there. Showing 109 degrees on the discharge. That is too cool. I got that fan sitting there because I was cooling off the compressor. Somebody expressed the idea of possibly buying this from me, so uh, I didn't want to burn it up on him during this test. It doesn't have adequate cooling, in my opinion. It needs a shroud or a cowling. Okay, that gives me 111. I'm hard pressed to believe. We're just gonna take it up to 400 watts. Yeah, I kind of jumped the gun there, didn't I? It's hard to dial in in that upper area. That's pretty warm water. I better get some safety glasses on because some explosions are about to happen. I'm gonna have lines busting and everything here in a minute. Okay, I'd say that's a pretty good reheat. Might even be boiling a little bit. We're at 127. Okay, so that test was a total disaster. Things just weren't working out right. This torch is clogged or something on me. Wow, what is all that about? Jeez. Really? Well, that might have had something to do with it. Unreal. wonder what tank that came off of. Maybe that's why the torch was acting up. I just found this old O-ring and spud on there. Crazy. Something was going on with this torch. I didn't have enough pressure. The flame wasn't right. Just wasn't. And then another thing I realized, I looked over my pressure gauge is down to like 40 PSI. So everything that could go wrong basically went wrong on this test. Um, this time I'm just gonna turn the pressure up all the way, hell with it. See what this thing can do on just full blast, I guess, because uh, that wasn't too cool. You can look over and I think we were at like 80 PSI's or 70 or something like that. You need every bit of 100 PSI's. It did start to clean. It just wasn't the pressure you need for that to happen. Um, the preheater sprung a little leak somewhere. Which may blow the bulb out at any time. Um, I ran out of water during the test. Which uh, nearly destroyed the preheater. So you would definitely want some type of uh, trigger mechanism to shut that water off. Some type of thermostat. Because that could get ugly. Somebody mentioned using a hot water heater element 
They've got a nice threaded end to them. You can just screw into a pipe setup just like this. It would probably be far better than that setup right there. This was just something thrown together with parts I had already. Thought I'd give it a shot. So now that I figured out what was going on with this torch, maybe I'll try that again. But um, that was a gallon and a half of water. So, and I didn't even get to start what I was gonna use this thing for, which was cleaning that stuff. I just wanted to check it for cleaning dirt off of equipment. It's 108 degrees temperature input to the coil. We need a hotter preheater, another propane burner coil. Problem. Okay, so that was our input water temperature. We're pulling about 513 watts to do that, which ain't helping us out much. That was the water flow we were running. And it did clean this thing up, but not at all in a timely manner. Definitely much cleaner than it was. However, it could do better. We're lacking the heat we need. I don't know how well the lighting was on the before shot of this thing, but uh, clean it up a little bit. thing definitely has room for improvement though I'm not satisfied I didn't just go over all of it okay we can see here some spots where I hit with the tool and the spots that were not hit with the tool you pretty much had to get the nozzle right down onto the surface but uh, nonetheless not totally useless it's just not there yet we need to build another coil or perhaps uh, Maybe I should just introduce this coil into the mix for a preheat coil. 
this would make a really good preheater coil so we can ramp up that water flow rate. Right now, the water flow rate we're getting and the heat input needs to be doubled, in my opinion. So this was a good little test to show us which direction to go in. Um, based on the conversation me and another gentleman had, the current units cost $500. And he says they're pretty big. I'll try and find one to get a picture of this thing. But uh, before we end that, I want to go ahead and just examine this as an open jet of steam up against a dark background to kind of get a look at uh, what this system is doing. And then we're going to take a look at the modified system because we're definitely going to be building another coil probably twice the size as that one for our preheater. Maybe it don't need to be twice the size. Maybe another coil that exact size would be enough. I'd hate to build one that wasn't quite big enough is why I say that. So the 500 watts on that thing is just not doing it. Um, it might be a good idea to try and buy one of those hot water heater elements, 120 volt version. Those are like 1500 watts. And I believe that would probably give us enough power. That's three times the energy. That'd probably be an easier build than a coil also. And cheaper. Because brazing is not cheap. You have to buy a whole tube of brazing rods. That's like 20 bucks, I think. They're not cheap. So, you can probably get them for cheaper than that. We'll do one last test with the device on full pressure. Um, the current spray that we have now, I think would be good enough to clean this stuff up. Just something to have some hot water to clean all this nasty stuff off of here. I've got all these metal plates I've got to clean off. <clears throat> I'd like to spray that gunk off of there. Um, other than that, I think that's where we are. I think the preheater sucks. I don't like it, taking it off. I just had to try it though. It just doesn't have the energy for the flow rates we're working with. And it's just not built very well. There's a lot of things that could be done to that, I suppose. Because a lot of what will happen is on a heat exchange like that, is if you get uh, such a small surface area, you'll boil the water at the heat exchange interface and reduce the active surface area of your heat exchange which um, definitely limits the performance from the little bubbles that kind of stick to the wall. There are no fins or anything like that inside that heat exchange. So I think we're dried up enough to go ahead and give this a shot. My camera died on me as usual. So that's why we ended abruptly, but let's give this a shot. In this test, I'm just doing a quick steam coil test at 100 PSI tank pressure. The water tank is under 100 PSI and you're going to be cranking 500 watts of preheat energy into a preheater and running this uh, turbo torch. Try that water flow right there. Preheater element over there, it's a 500 watt hose and light bulb and a heat exchanger. I just wanted to document the uh, steam production off various water flows. There wasn't very much fluid flow. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. Heater. 
about 153 degrees on the discharge. That right there. That was a pretty decent uh, flow, as far as the steam engine would go anyway. A small steam engine, of course. I'm talking model here. But it's interesting to see what a certain amount of water flash boiled looks like. Compressor has not yet kicked on throughout the entire experiment. The amount of actual air needed is very small. We're displacing a very small amount of fluid. So as far as the small steam cleaning tools concerned, a very small compressor can be used, which is kind of cool. I'm going to try and uh, get an oxygen tank maybe and a uh, evaporator compressor because though they're a little bit quicker than the uh little air conditioner ones i think anyway i could be wrong they just seem to have a better compressor in them they're rotary uh, i believe they're uh and i can't remember
vapor locking on me. Paper lock means we might have to do something a little different than two torches. Might have to have a bigger nozzle. I'm going to do 100 milliliters and we'll calculate the liters per minute. And time. We'll do 500 milliliters also to check the accuracy. Coming up on 200. Whoa, what was that? <laughs> All right, forget it. Something's going on. Up, oh, right of water. Okay. So, for that entire test, we used every bit of a gallon of water. There was a little bit left in there, but I did just dump some in there. So, we'll take a look at that. As far as this thing being a good degreaser tool, it's going to need a little bit more power than this. We're going to have to have two burner torches, a preheater, or perhaps, as uh, one individual suggested, a uh, hot water pump or uh, a hot water heater heating elements. You can buy those with threaded ends on them that may screw right into a piece of pipe for a good uh, preheater. So I'm going to check into that. But this is uh, just what that little nozzle can do with just one torch and 500 watts of additional electricity added into it. Got me a nice little mess going here. But that's where we're at with this thing. I'm not done with this yet. This thing is not finished. But uh, I do think I'm gonna go ahead and use it to clean up these electrolyzer plates for a hydrogen torch. 